Hello again. Today we are going to be covering a really important topic. However, before I talk about that, let me say this. Programming is a way of thinking. Over time, you'll be able to visualize your code running as you type it and think of ways it could go wrong. To get from where you are today and what I just described takes one thing. One thing that separates you sitting here today from the best programmers in the world. Experience. I know, I know, it sounds really cliche, but it's the truth. The only thing different about 12 year old me wanting to know how to make Minecraft plugins and 20 year old me teaching others how to do the same is experience. I failed more times than I can count. There were days or even weeks where I felt clueless and like it was all a waste of time. But as I kept learning, I saw that there are no magic beans that anybody else has that I did not. The only thing that they had that I didn't have was experience. So let's discuss the topic for today, a command with arguments. The first thing you need to know is what a conditional statement is. A conditional statement takes an input and evaluates it. That was an extremely vague definition, but I will expand on the concept. All conditional statements must have a body. Let's say I have a conditional statement that takes a number and checks to see if that number is equal to zero. If the input is equal, the body will execute. If not, nothing happens. These kind of conditional statements are known as if statements. To create an if statement, type if, then a set of parentheses followed by a set of braces. Inside of these parentheses is where your conditional goes. Just like a class or a function, the body is contained within the braces. Today we are going to be making a command that adds two numbers together. If you would like to challenge yourself and train your muscle memory, feel free to create a new project. I am going to be working on the same project we made last time. I'm going to start by registering our command and adding it to our plugin.yml and on enable method. I'm going to use IntelliJ's code generator to create my class for me. As you can see, the add command class does not exist. To generate the class, click on the text, then hover over it, and select Create Class. Make sure to put it in the correct package. As you can see, IntelliJ knew the parameter in the setExecutor function needed to be an instance of the CommandExecutor class, so our class by default implements CommandExecutor. Now we just need to add the onCommand method and optionally change the names of the parameters. I always return true as I do not want Bucket to send an error message. So our command is going to take whatever two numbers we input as arguments and add them together. So first we need to make sure the player has input arguments. We can do this by using a conditional. I'm going to make an empty if statement as described earlier. It does not matter if your braces are on the line with the if statement or on the next line. Now we need to input our condition. But what exactly is that? We are going to use the args parameter to come up with our condition. The args parameter is an array of strings. An array is a collection or list of data. So this variable represents a list of strings. This array is populated by bucket and contains all of the arguments input after the command. These two brackets signify that your data type is an array. I hope you watched the debugging video where I talked about indexes, otherwise you might feel lost. Simply put, the index represents the position of an element in the array starting at zero. If you remember from that video, we can get an error if the user does not input any arguments. So to prevent this, we are going to check the number of elements in our array. So let's create a variable that is an integer that is going to represent the number of elements in our array. If you forgot your math lessons, an integer is a whole number. To get the number of elements from an array, we can use the length property. This property stores the number of elements in an array. We will talk more about properties in the future. Last time, I forgot to mention why we even use variables. They provide a way to label and store information. So since we assigned the length of our array to this variable, our variable holds the number of elements in our array, and we can use this variable later on. If we didn't store this value in a variable, the computer would throw it away immediately and not save it to memory. So let's come up with a condition. Since we are using numbers, we can use arithmetic operators. An operator performs operations. Duh. Let me explain. You are already familiar with most of the arithmetic operators from your math class. Add, subtract, multiply, divide, less than, greater than, equal to, and modulo. Okay, maybe not that last one. Actually, yes, that last one too. Modulo is just a fancy way of saying the remainder. So the remainder of a division problem. You can perform modulo by using the modulus symbol, also known as the percent sign. 
let's come up with our condition. First, input the name of your variable, as this is the number we want to compare. If our array is empty, this variable will be zero. So our condition should check for that value. So let's see if our variable is equal to zero. You can see we have a syntax error. That is because the equal sign is the assignment operator. The equals operator is represented as two equal signs. Now we have a condition. If this condition is true, this block of code will run. If not, the program will skip over it. In the body of our conditional, let's send a message back to the sender to let them know they need to input an argument. Wait a second, what if they only input one or three? We want them to input two arguments, so let's change our conditional to make sure the number of elements is two. Now our code will run if the number of arguments is two. Let's talk about the next kind of conditional statement, else. The else statement can only be used in conjunction with an if statement. We call these if else statements. If the conditional is true, the code of block will run. If it is false, the else block will run. Let's add an else statement on our conditional. As you can see, our else statement comes directly after our if statement. If our conditional is false, that means the user did not input two arguments. So we can go ahead and move our message into there. Now we want to add these values together. However, this is where we run into a little problem. Our array is a list of strings, not integers which means we cannot perform any arithmetic operations on the elements. So let's Google and figure out how to convert a string to an integer. As you can see, we can use a function from the integer class to parse an integer from the string. Parse is a fancy word for to read or analyze. So this method will extract an integer from a string. Changing the data type of a value is known as type coercion. Let's implement this in our code. First, create a variable to hold this new value. We're going to statically reference the method. When you reference something statically, it indicates there is only one of that type. It is a constant. Don't worry if you do not fully understand, as you learn more about instances, it will become apparent. So let's statically reference the integer class. The function we are looking for is the parseInt function. To get an element from an array, input the index encased in brackets after the variable name. This is called bracket notation. Since we are getting the first element, we can use zero. Let's repeat that same thing, but for the second argument. Now let's create a variable that will hold the sum of the two integers. We can add the two numbers together in the variable definition. Don't think of this as an equation. We are assigning the sum of num1 and num2 to the variable sum. Let's send a message to the sender, letting them know the sum of the two integers. Hold on a second. How do we add our variable to the message? We use concatenation. Concatenate is a fancy word for connect. So we are going to concatenate our integer at the end of our message. So after this space, we are going to exit the string and add a plus. This is the concatenation operator. We can concatenate two or more strings or a string and an integer. Let's concatenate the sum onto our message. We are now finished with our command. Let's test this out in game. As you can see, our error message works and so does the addition. However, we still have some issues to iron out. As of now, the command will only add two arguments together. If I add more, it will not run. The next problem we run into is if we input any two arguments that aren't an integer. We get a stack trace printed to the console. Next time, we will solve these issues. If you run into any issues, feel free to head on over to my Discord to connect with a bunch of like-minded individuals. The link is in the description. That's all for today, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.